The County of Dorset has a rich aviation history. Sadly, there have been many aviation disasters dating back over many decades. One of these disasters stands head and shoulders above all others. In fact, this is the story of the worst aeroplane crash in Dorset's history. The year is 1945. The date is Friday 15th of June. Although the war in Europe has ended with the Allied victory over the Nazis, the war in the Far East still rages on. The need for skilled men will be vital for success. The fated flight, which was selected for this mission, was an American aircraft flown by the RAF, a consolidated RY3 variant Liberator Express. This was a transport derivative of the B-24 Liberator heavy bomber. Liberator JT-985 of number 232 Squadron took off from RAF Holmesley South in the New Forest on the first leg on its long haul flight to Palam, India. The first refuelling stop was scheduled to be at RF Castle Benito near Tripoli in North Africa. This special aircraft variant had passenger accommodation in the former Bombay area as well as within the main fuselage of the aircraft. This aircraft was easily distinguished from the heavy bomber variant that it was based upon. The heavy bomber has a double tail fin arrangement compared to the RY3's single tail fin that was so well known with Coastal Command and the US Air Force. This aircraft was also unarmed. The plane was under the command of Flight Lieutenant Saxon Cole of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Other crew members also of the Royal Canadian Air Force were co-pilot Donald Twaddle, navigator Joseph Todd, radio officer George McPherson and Sergeant George Wick, flight engineer. Also on board was an American citizen, the radio officer George McPherson. The passenger load consisted not of VIPs, as was the more normal load for such a flight, but of a vital flight of 22 airmen being sent out as urgently needed ground crew at Palam, India. The weather at Holmesley South was poor, but both the captain and the duty executive officer considered it acceptable to take off. They also considered the fact that the weather was poor enough for a diversion to be likely if an early return was needed. Flight JT-985 departed at 0720 hours. At 0745 hours, shortly after crossing the coast outbound, 
The aircraft reported a loss of fuel pressure. At around 0815 hours, the owner of Enkham House, Sir Ernest Scott, and also a worker at Enkham Dairy, both witnessed the aircraft. The aircraft was obviously in trouble, flying dangerously low below the height of the hills, and both knew instinctively that it was going to crash. The aircraft impacted the ground on the edge of what is now the Dorset Coastal Path. The wings were ripped off and the engines detached from the fuselage and they were thrown forwards towards Orchard Hill Farm. One wing came to rest on the footpath which was in polar wood leading from the top of the ridge to the farm. Sadly, in this crash there were no survivors. The first people to reach the crash site were an RAF sergeant by the name of Reginald Reynolds, who was staying at Enkham House. Also members of an army searchlight battery located between the farm and the village of Kingston attended the scene. They were soon joined by RAF personnel from the nearby RAF base Worth Maltravers. The National Fire Service from Swanage was soon on the scene as were the local police. Eventually the low cloud base lifted at about 11 o'clock to reveal a scene of total devastation. In total, the tragic remains of 27 bodies were recovered. Many personal belongings were recovered, such as a photograph of a baby, playing cards, personal notebooks, wallets, together with a distinguished flying cross, which had been thrown from its box. All of the victims were then transported to Paul mortuary. This was and still remains as the worst ever air crash in Dorset's history. Today the tragedy is remembered near the spot of the crash with a commemorative Purbeck stone bench which can be visited today. Here is a list of all the victims of the disaster. <laughs> 